All right, so now we want to collect all of those Steenrod squares up into an algebra called the Steenrod algebra. And the Steenrod algebra is just that, so uh, let's define it. The Steenrod algebra, and often people denote this with a kind of scripty A, is the free graded Z mod 2 algebra. Notice I didn't say uh, graded commutative. So in general, I mean, in fact, it's not commutative. It's not even graded commutative. It's only associative. Okay, so this is the free graded Z mod 2 algebra with generators. The squares, so square i for i greater than or equal to 0. And this is supposed to be a graded algebra, so the degree of square i is just i. And it's not just a free algebra, so I'm describing it by generators and relations. So it's subject to some relations we've seen before, the ADEM relations. Okay, so in fact, I... Uh, It's a theorem that A is the student run algebra A is minimally generated by the squares that are powers of 2, so square 2 to the i for i greater than or equal to 0. I won't prove that now, but we'll come back to that. But this is not a basis, so I mean generated as an algebra. Uh, and we're going to need some, some definition, some notation to be able to talk about particular kinds of squares. For example, these like nice sorts of squares we're seeing, um, and, and so on. So we're going to define I, it's just going to be a sequence I1 through IR. This is a sequence of positive integers. And we'll use that sequence to uh, uh, define compositions of squares. I think I said this last time that it's sort of inconvenient to keep writing squa every time. So this squa to the i, capital I, just means compose all these different squares. Square i1, after square i2, after, and so on, square ir. Okay, and then we'll call this sequence I admissible. If we look at some term IJ and it's greater than two times IJ plus one. Okay, so I, this is called admissible, but I think of it as not ademable. Remember that our dem relations um, said if we had a less than 2b that we could change square a square b into some other sum of compositions. And so this is saying, no, you're not in that case, not a demable. Okay, and uh, i has degree, well, we just want to keep track of uh, the degree that we are in the Steenrod algebra, so degree of i is just going to be the sum of all of those terms, okay? And if we're in the case where i is admissible, then we'll define something called the excess. And the excess, often denoted e of i, is just going to be 2 times i1 minus the degree of this sequence. Now, uh, that's sort of an easy computation to do, but maybe it's not so meaningful. Why are we calling this the excess? So we can also write that as i1 minus 2i2 plus i2 minus 2i3 
plus and so on and then our last term is just going to be IR since there's no next term to subtract uh, or you could imagine you know these sequences being infinite and, and maybe having um, zeros one at some finite stage uh, and forever more so uh, now it's sort of clear why this is called the excess because this tells us how far away we are from the edge of that ADEM relation case, right? If, if I1 is equal to 2I2, then that's just at the edge where we're not ADEMable. Okay, so this tells us sort of how far we are from, from that. Okay, and then uh, it's a theorem that we can use these, oops, maybe let me scroll up. Though now you can't see the definition. Okay, so I is admissible if it's not ademable. And then the theorem is that these admissible squares are the ones that give us a basis. So if I is admissible, then indeed, indeed we do have a Zeeman 2 basis for the Steenrod algebra. Okay, and if you haven't seen this before, a good exercise just to get some practice with what's going on here, I suggest that you write the admissible basis for A. Well, A is infinite, so of course not for all of A, but through degree seven. So degree zero up to degree seven. Okay, now our our Steenrod algebra is an algebra, and we've said uh, that it's the free algebra on some generators, modulo some relations, the ADEM relations, and we've also come up with a basis for it and so on, but there's actually a lot of additional structure here. And we won't make too much use of this right away, but this is something that people might want to explore in, in a project, for example. Uh, so let me at least say a little bit about it as long as we're here. So the Carton formula, which tells us uh, that square K, if we wanted to look at uh, some product that really we should be thinking about uh, the sum of square I tensor square K minus I for various I, and this induces a coproduct on the Steenrod algebra. And even better, it's an algebra homomorphism. Okay, and this algebra homomorphism, you can show, and again, the, a lot of the details here are in Mosher and Tangora, that this makes the Steenrod algebra into a co-commutative Hopf algebra. Okay, well, uh, maybe that's sort of annoying because co-commutative is kind of an annoying condition, but that tells us that the dual, which must be nice because uh, A is finite dimensional in each degree, even if it's not finite dimensional, so we can describe this dual, uh, and this is going to be a commutative Hop algebra. Okay, and in fact, the dual Steenrod algebra has a really nice description. So it's a theorem of Milner that the dual Steenrod algebra is actually just polynomial. I guess I've been writing Z mod 2. I'm used to writing F2 in my life, but that's okay. And these are supposed to be Cs. I'm going to confess right now that I can't write C, especially on the tablet. But each of these Cis is in degree 2 to the i minus 1. Okay, so these are not uh, the dual basis to our Steenrod squares or even our admissible squares. Um, but there is a nice basis where you get just polynomial on infinitely many generators. 
and we can define uh, the co-product. So if you take one of these polynomial guys, then you're going to get the sum for my equals zero to k of c k minus i. I think that looks like a zeta, but oh well. Uh, to the 2i tensor, that one really looks like a zeta, <laughs> but it's supposed to be c i. And uh, with this nice basis for the dual Steenrod algebra, you can take the dual basis to that to get a basis for the Steenrod algebra. And the dual to, sorry, this basis is called the Milner basis for the Steenrod algebra. And sometimes really just depending on what it is you want to be doing, it may be easier to work in the dual, it may be easier to work with the squares, or it may be easier to work with this dual to the dual basis, uh, the Milner basis. And so what do you get when you do that? Well, it's a terrible C. That one's not much better. Okay. Uh, CK is going to be dual to square IK. So I should put some sequence here. And what sequence is it? Well, it's going to be where I take uh, square 2 to the k minus 1 after square 2 to the k minus 2 and so on until I get down to 2, 1, and then 0 forevermore if you like. Okay, so we're not going to make much use of that right now, but I sort of feel like I can't talk about the Steenrod algebra without mentioning its dual. So let's go back to the Steenrod algebra. And I kind of want to just give you sort of some, some useful techniques here. So pictures are often really helpful when computing anything with the Steenrod algebra, I find. So for example, if I look at A of K, so now I'm back to my regular Steenrod algebra, not the dual, then this is going to be the subalgebra where I take uh, it generated by all the square i's where i is less than 2 to the k. Okay, so that's a subalgebra. And in particular, I could take a1, sort of my smallest interesting subalgebra of this form, and that's going to look like uh, it should be generated by square 1, square 2. Okay, and um, I, I find it really helpful to draw a picture of this, so uh, I wonder if I can fit it here. Probably not. Okay, so let me just do it down here. And I'm going to cheat and think about knowing it already to give myself a nice grid here to draw it. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll see what these classes are in a moment. So what I'm going to do is have a vertical line mean square one and if I can keep track of the colors a curved line say in blue is going to be square two okay and so I look at uh, square one times one and that's just square one so there's a square one connection here and then remember from our dem relations square one square one is zero so I shouldn't draw a square one after that Okay, but I could also take square two on one. Okay, and so there I have my square two. Uh, now I can do square two after square one. And I'm going to draw that as, as something over here. I could sort of put it at either dot. I'm, I'm only drawing these dots in this place because I've drawn this picture before and I know what I want it to look like. Okay, so there's, there's something that looks like square two after square one. Um, and uh, notice that square two after square one um, has, has no excess. But now I might ask, what is square one, square two, square one? And remember, we had 
this ADEM relation that square 2 square 2 is square 1 square 2 square 1. And so that tells me that, I, well, let's do square 1 here. So that composition reads as square 1 square 2 square 1. But that must be the same as square 2 after square 2, and so I have a square 2 connection here. Notice that got a little extra curvy um, just because the way I've drawn this. Okay, um, now I could have a square 1 here, square 1 after square 2. It's perfectly fine, and, and I, it's not square 2, square 1, so those shouldn't meet. That's okay. Um, but then if I do, well, let's see. Okay, I can do square two on that. So that looks like uh, maybe I trace through that I do square two, square one, square two. And I can do square one on that. But now looking up here, I've got square one, square two, square one, and I know that that's square two, square two, so there must be a square two connection here. Okay, and so this is a picture of A1, and uh, it can be really convenient when you're sort of trying to work out some module to, to draw this, this A1, or some subalgebra of the Steenrod algebra, or even just uh, the beginning of the Steenrod algebra. Now, I was taking the subalgebra generated by square one, square two, and so I haven't drawn any uh, square fours. Remember, it's minimally generated by the squares on powers of two, so I, I don't even need to consider square three because that was just square one, square two. And in fact, it's in the picture already. Um, I guess I should say why I stop. So uh, certainly I can't have another square one out of here because square one, square one is zero. And uh, I think I can work out that square two, um, well, I can't have a square two coming out of this spot because if I had a square two, then this would look like uh, square two, square two, and square two, square two is square one, square two, two square one. You can see how it becomes annoying even to say the squiz. Um, so the, the point is if I had two square twos here, then that would have to factor as a one and then a two and then a one, but there is no square one here. So I really am done at that point. Okay, so uh, one of the things that comes up later on is that we'll want to be computing x over this Dean round algebra when we're looking at, say, the atom spectral sequence much later in this course. And when we do that, sometimes it's easier to compute x over some smaller subalgebra. This is a nice sort of first uh, thing to practice. So um, anyway, maybe, maybe a good idea to play around with that. But this is, these kind of pictures are also going to be helpful to us when we start dealing with uh, the Sayre spectral sequence and trying to compute homotopy groups of spheres.